Hello and welcome to Green Biz Studio. I'm Heather Clancy, the Editorial Director of Green Biz, and I'm joined by Jessica Onishko. She is the Sustainable Chemistry Lead at Anthesis Group, a sustainability consulting and strategy firm. Jessica, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay, gotta ask, what is sustainable chemistry? Yeah, so sustainable chemistry is a pretty broad topic because not only does it cover environmentally benign chemicals, but it goes, it takes a more holistic approach and considers things like manufacturing practices, uh, product stewardship practices, and even covers the whole of the supply chain. So how do companies embed this concept into their practices? And maybe maybe by talking about that, you'll you'll give me an example of like how sustainable chemistry is different than, than chemistry. Yes, embedding sustainable chemistry into an organization is contingent on a number of factors because the discipline is so broad. So in general, uh, most companies right now are looking at how do we embed sustainable chemistry practices into our products and supply chain that cover the product's entire life cycle? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about raw material selection, manufacturing, use, and end of life scenarios. Raw material selection, I'll use that as an example. When companies go to embed sustainable chemistry practices um, in, the, in the raw material phase of looking at products, they're really asking questions like, is this material or chemical bio-based? How does this contribute to the circular economy? Is this part of a regenerative economy? Um, is this chemical even safe? And that's a very fundamental question, but we lack a lot of data on that. So companies are really take looking at their products and their supply chains and how to make them better for the human and environmental health and safety. So give me some examples of how companies are innovating using sustainable chemistry as the, as the linchpin. Absolutely. So again, it all depends on a company's size, product sector, and what innovation looks like for that particular product category or what their supply, supply chain looks like. But in, uh, for some of my large retail clients, for example, ingredient transparency has become such a hot topic because the lack of transparency that exists in the supply chains and the tools just have not been developed, but they're starting to, and they're starting to scale, and it's a really exciting time for ingredient transparency across the supply chain. Um, another area is the circular economy initiatives that are taking place. So how the advancement of technologies and how we go about um, taking waste plastics, converting it into new plastics or chemicals that can then later be uh, used in new materials. This is some really exciting advancements in technology once they're able to scale. And then, I can't stress this enough about social innovation that's happening because of sustainable chemistry practices. Um, so capacity building, social innovation in the supply chain. When we go to manufacturers in developing countries and having to teach them about human and environmental health and safety as it pertains to better chemical management practices, more sustainable chemistry ideologies in place in the supply chain. It's a really exciting time. What advice would you give to companies about how to embark on their sustainable chemistry journey? Well, again, it all depends on where a company's at. And so I think that companies to recognize where they're at, do a gap analysis, a SWOT analysis of their current practices against best practices for their particular sector, and then building out a strategy that's fit for purpose for them and their needs. Um, you know, we did this a, a few short years ago with Target. Uh, Target just starting out on their journey for sustainable chemistry and developing a chemical policy. And in only a short amount of time, taking small iterative steps, have they become a world-class leader in sustainable chemistry. And I would also say that if an organization can't start big and across all of their products, across all of their supply chain, start small. Mm -hmm. A pilot project can go a long way and can be part of your iterative process for implementing better sustainable chemistry practices into your organization. If you can't make big changes, make small changes because some change is better than no change. Well, thanks for the chemistry lesson. <laughs> I appreciate it. And thank you for joining us in the Green Biz Studio.